Hello everybody, it's Tido Miner and welcome to this video. In this series we are going to create a sliding puzzle game in Unity. I'm using Unity 2019 and JetBrains Rider as a script editor. So let's just start. I imported some sprites to the project here. It's an empty project. I just added these sprites. So I, we have a background for our game background and a sprite for puzzle tiles. And also I have a sprite here that contains numbers, 0 to 9, but you can see all of them are in one sprite, we are going to cut them later. So let's start by adding the background to the scene. Okay, and let's just make the camera smaller, fit it with the background. Okay, this is good, and select the background, and in the components, in the sprite renderer, set the ordering layer to my, uh, negative 1, because our background should, be, should go behind all of the other objects. Now let's add tiles. Let's create an empty object in here, name it tiles, and let's... Uh, add a tile into it. Okay, it's in here. Let me move it up and left. Two, uh, sorry, negative two point sixty four. Let me see if we. Okay, uh, before. Uh, putting tiles, you have to reset the transform of this tiles uh, game object because you can see now uh, reset the transform of the tiles and now we can put it on the screen to negative 2.62 in 2.62 and change the name to tile Uh, zero and because if you duplicate it you can see the numbers increase with every copy uh, we need to uh, put a number on the tile and that's why we have this sprite we're not going to use a font or any package so we have to first we have to cut the numbers uh, in this uh, sprite, so set select the sprite, set the sprite mode to multiple, and click on apply. Now, open the sprite editor using this button in here, and in this slice section up here, click on a slice, and you can see all of them are in a separate sprite now. And apply and close the sprite editor. If you click on this arrow. On this triangle in here you can see numbers okay for this one let's let's create an empty object inside it named it name it numbers number and let's add the number one sprite to it reset the transform okay you can see our background uh, ordering layer is negative one our tiles sprite ordering layer is zero so our numbers order in layer should be 1. You can see it's good now. Let's make it a little smaller. 0.7. I think it's good. Okay, le now let's create other tiles. Duplicate it and move it. Eight, eight, or maybe 87. Okay, it's good. Now, it, it is good. Uh, now we have to change the number, select the number and drag the number to a sprite into the sprite render. Okay. Now let's keep doing it.
Okay, now we have enough tiles in our board. We shouldn't fill the board because we need an empty space in here. Uh, so let's start. Uh, let's create an empty object for this empty space in here. Name it empty space. Sorry, empty space. And let's uh, move it to this empty space in here. 2.62 in negative 2.62 okay now let's start scripting into the asset folders in the asset folders create a folder named scripts and let's create a c sharp script name it for example game script it's our main game script and open it in here, let's remove these comment lines. Also, we need we don't need these two usings in here. We just need Unity Engine. If we need any of them, we can add them later. Okay. Uh, for that, first we have to uh, write a variable here for our empty space game object for this one, and we. Uh, let me write public game object empty space. Okay, this is good, but there is a problem. Uh, if we go to the Unity editor and give this a script to the main camera, you can see we can change the value in here, but this is a public variable. We, uh, we need to give the value from the unity editor but we don't need to access it from other classes but if we, if i make it private uh, it's a private it's not accessible from other scripts other classes but in unity editor i can't change the value so uh, before the private write serialize field like this and now it's a private but is a serialized field. We can give values or change the value from the Unity editor. Okay, we'll return to uh, the game script. In update, we need to check player clicks. We have to check where it goes, where he clicks. We're going to do that using Raycast. So first let's write if input and put that get mouse button down zero button number zero is the left button if player clicked the left button of the mouse uh, let's create a um, raycast but we need to use the camera the main camera for creating that raycast for that let's create an, another private uh, variable private and uh, camera name it camera like this and in the start write camera equals camera dot main camera dot mains returns the uh, main camera so it's good now in the click condition we have to write ray name it ray equals camera Camera dot screen point to rate. Now we have to uh, write a vector two here. We, uh, let's write input dot mouse position. Okay, when player clicks, it creates a ray from uh, using camera where player clicked. Okay, now we need to create a raycast hit. Raycast hit. Sorry. Hit 2D, name it hit, it equals, uh, we have to shoot this ray now. It equals to physics dot raycast, uh, sorry, we have to use raycast uh, physics 2D, physics 2D dot raycast, ray dot uh, origin, and in the direction of ray dot direction we don't we don't need to add a maximum range now when our 
this rake has hit an object, the object will be stored in this variable. So here if uh, write and condition if hit there is no need to write if hit the transform is not equal to empty. When we write if hit use it like a boolean it will returns true when our raycast hits an object. So if hit if our raycast hits an object now let's just say debug dot log the name of the that object hit dot transform dot name. Now let's return to the Unity and select the main camera. You can see if uh, if we run the game and click on the tiles, no nope, nothing happens because we need to give an give a collider to puzzle tiles. Select all of the tiles and add a component. Add components physics 2D and box collider 2D. You can see all of them has a box collider. Uh, now if we run the game, we play the game, you can see when I click on a puzzle tile, uh, you can see the name of the tile in here. Okay, that's good. Now we need to write another condition. We have to check the distance between that tile and the empty space. Because if we want to change the position of this one with the empty space, this tile should be near the empty space. You cannot move this tile or this tile when our empty space is here. So let's write the condition. If vector two dot distance vector two dot distance returns the distance between two points the first one is empty space dot uh, transform Let, let's uh, change this game object to transform now we just need to write if empty space dot position if the distance between empty space dot position and our object hit dot transform that position. If the pos if the distance between these two points is less than, for example, two, and in here we have to change the position of that tile with empty space. So let's create a temporary variable here, uh, vector two last empty space position it equals to empty space dot position we uh, save the empty space position in here before changing it now write empty space dot position equals to hit dot transform dot position now after saving the position empty space goes to the tile position now we need to move the tile so right hit dot transform dot position equals to last empty space position now it should work let's uh, return to the unity editor you can see that warning is in here this warning is because of this serialized field just uh, write equals null in front of the serialized field variable. Now, if we return to the Unity editor, you can see there is no warning here. And so let's run the game and see if it works. I click on the 11 tile. Okay, okay. Uh, it shows an error in here because we change the type of this empty space variable so we have to assign the value again now let's try again and when i click on 11 tile nothing happens but when i click on this 12 you can see it uh, change the position with the empty space
now I can change the position of the eleven, move the eleven tile. Now you can see it's working good. Okay, I'm going to finish this video in here. In the next part, we are going to make this movement a little smoother. Also, we are going to create a shuffle system for our puzzle tiles. If you liked the video and learned anything new, press the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.